Hello, everyone, and welcome to From Setup to Success, a webinar about the Bluebeam software setup. Uh, my name is Juliana, and I work in marketing here at MicroCAD. And today's presenter is Julian, our applications specialist. Um, in this webinar, Julian will show you the essential setup techniques needed to excel with Bluebeam software. Um, as usual, throughout the webinar, you can ask a question on the left on sorry on the left hand corner, and you can ask Julian to revisit a step or ask any questions. And in the upper left hand corner, you will find links to our website, social media, and YouTube channel. We post all of our webinars on our YouTube channel at the end, so you can share with colleagues or watch it on your own time. And we will be also sending the on-demand recording of this webinar, I believe it's 24 hours after the webinar, so you will be receiving it tomorrow. And if you have colleagues who registered and couldn't make it, they will also get it as well. So without further ado, I'll pass it on to Julian. Hi, Holly. Hi, Juliana. Thank you uh, for the introduction. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share uh, my screen. So just give me a second right here. Make sure that I'm presenting my whole screen. Yep. There we go. So once again, uh, welcome, everyone. Um, this is... Um, an addition to our webinar series. So if you attend the previous two, uh, and the first couple of ones we discuss, uh, kind of like your platform uh, when it comes to manage your license, right? Uh, we discuss as well the options to go from maintenance to subscription. And today's session is going to focus on setting up your software, right? So getting familiar with your interface, um, and as well, when um, we follow with this series, as you get comfortable with your uh, uh, software and your users start getting a little bit more experience, uh, you're going to start to get a little bit more proficient using your, your software. Now, uh, let me go ahead and uh, launch right here uh, my Bluebeam. And so, um, if this is the first time that you're seeing uh, review Bluebeam, uh, and this is the case, a couple of things that you're going to notice, uh, similar to other PDF tools or type softwares, uh, right away is going to be a little bit different. Uh, first things that you notice is kind of like that black screen, uh, right? We are familiar to see kind of like light colors in all or other softwares, right? Uh, another couple of things is that right away you're going to see a bunch of different icons right there on the left hand corner, uh, a bunch of different icons as well on the right hand corner. Um, but uh, something that is worth noticing is that uh, once we start using the software, if you pay attention to the top left of your screen, this is going to be the common bar, it's going to be similar to any Windows type of program, right? So uh, we have kind of like quick access to review, file, edit, view tools. So this command bar is going to be um, the start of your software. Now, getting familiar with the software, at this point, we are not going to pay too much attention to these panels on the side, but we are going to start um, navigating right here to the review tab. First things first, um, if you're working on a subscription base plan, you're going to notice as well, right here, top right, your credentials is going to be your company email, right? Uh, but if you're working with previous versions, such so as review 20, what you're going to notice right here, uh, top left in the review tab, you should have an additional section that is going to allow you to register or unregister your license. Right. So in this case, you might need to talk. Uh, if you're an, an end user, you might need to talk uh, with your IT. You might need to talk uh, with um, a superior. That is going to give you the serial number and product key to register that license. Right. Or otherwise, review 20 and above. Always remember the only thing that you need is going to be your email and credentials. Now, 
couple of things that are worth mentioning before we jump into the file, edit, and all that. Uh, we are talking about setting up your software, right? So when we are setting up the software, uh, a couple of things that you're going to be able to find is right here at the top left, an option for profiles. So not necessarily you need to start from scratch and modifying and editing uh, the tools that you need. You can as well talk to your team members because they are going to be able to either share an existing profile with you that has all your company standards, but as well, uh, you can select one of the predefined existing uh, profiles that review offers and they are available. So for example, right here, I'm going to show you the review advanced uh, profile. So you're going to notice that right here at the top, is slightly change. Uh, so some of my most used and common tools are going to be shown right here at the top. Some other ones are going to be uh, sent to my right panel and the other ones are going to be sent to the left panel. So it's always worth mentioning that, okay, uh, using those profiles, you're going to be able to customize the way that your software is going to look, is going to give you the right tools for the right project, right? Now, following this, uh, when it comes to the profiles, if you start modifying a couple of tools, something that you can do as well is click on one of those existing ones, right? You can select right here the options to uh, show, which is going to hide some of the tools that are visible right here. You can hide some of them, or you can attach them to the right or to the left, depending on the type of tool that you would like to use. Same deal with the tools right here at the right side. You can notice that I have uh, different type of text tools and markup tools but you can customize those as well. Define for all the available tools and start adding it to uh, any area of your screen uh, where you're going to uh, have them available. Now, let me start a quick project right here. I'm going to go to File, New. So we can see uh, some of those tools visible. Now, once you have your PDF open uh, and once you have um, your tools available, you're going to notice that they are going to go from grayed out to the actual color, uh, what is going to be highlighted. And from right here, you can start using uh, your markups. Now, something additional that I want to show and share with you when you're setting your software, you're going to notice that if you move your mouse kind of like next to the uh, corners of the software, at some point, you're going to find this blue beam pun intended, uh, and in that case, what it's going to allow you to do is to collapse, right, or enlarge some of the panels that we can see right here at the left side. Now, be careful when you're adjusting that bar, right, because at some point can be hidden, right? As well, if you click on top of the panel, it's going to enlarge and collapse depending on the tool that you're using. If you click twice on the same tool, it's going to be hidden. If you click once, it's going to show it. So this is kind of like part of the navigation and setup because uh, sometimes we are trying to find the uh, right tools, right? Um, we are trying to find kind of like the options and properties for the markups that I'm doing. So for example, I'm going to use right here the pen. I'm just doing a quick line. Then I can go ahead and select this and I would like to add a couple of additional features. So I do not like the red color. Right away, you are always are going to find uh, right here at the top on, of this bar, a couple of quick options to edit some features, which are pretty basic. But as well, some of the tools that I always recommend to have available is going to be this right here, the uh, gear icon, which is the properties. In this case, it's going to give me additional features that I'm going to be able to edit and modify. So once again, you can see the color right here. So I can go from green to red. Uh, now you can see what this 100% means. But if you leave your mouse on top of any tool, it's going to give you the name and what it 80%. does. So that is going to be, for example, the opacity. The, uh, the other one to the right is going to be the line weight. So you can modify your markups or uh, from that area right here at the top or open up the properties. 
setting up the properties right here on your project. Remember, you can go ahead and right click and right here, just select the properties. So I always encourage users when starting uh, setting up and working with Bluebeam, uh, try to look for your properties. And as you can see um, in my screen right here, we have uh, different shortcuts uh, for all the panels and tools that we have on the left side. So if you're that type of user that um, is really fast and um, have a really good memory when it comes to uh, shortcuts and commands, uh, you can start using these ones. Now, this is regarding the uh, properties and how to start setting up your project area. Now, following kind of like uh, what I was saying that uh, when we start, we are going to notice a bunch of different icons. Probably when you see it, you're not going to remember each one of these tools, what it's going to do. But uh, right here in the help menu, we have a really powerful tool, which is going to be the find tools and commands. So we can start from this area. So what I like to do with my project. So, OK, I need to create, for example, a stamp. Right, so something that I can do if I don't remember where is the stamp tool, I can start typing right there, and we can see all the available tools that I have for stamps uh, in review. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and select, uh, for example, this one, a stamp or apply stamp. So what is going to do, as you can see, I like to have the properties right here because it's going to allow me to select from the different. Uh, stamp tools that I have. So right here for review one, for example. Uh, let me select this one, the approve. You can see that I can cycle through the different uh, set of tools um, when it comes to uh, placing a markup in my drawing. So really cool tool right here, help find tools and commands. So this is going to help me remember, collect the icons. It's going to quickly uh, give me the tool that I need. So for example, let's say that I would like to do a measure. So I can start typing measure. And right here, I have the measure tool. And something cool about this search bar is that as well is going to give me the icon uh, for the particular tool. So the measure tool. So right away, you can see that is going to enter the measuring tool. This current drawing that I have right here doesn't have a scale. But you can customize the scale. You can add it from any DWG file that you have or the PDF. If you notice that it has a scale, you can set a preset or you can customize it. Right? So say apply scale. And right there, I'm going to get my measurement. Right? So another thing that I would like to mention when we are setting up our project uh, is going to be kind of like that file management uh, portion of the software. Uh, and that is going to be right here, left side. It's called the file access. You're going to notice it's kind of like a, uh, an office uh, locker or an office box uh, where you're going to access your files. Now, what is going to be great about this is that you're going to be able to see all your recent files. You can organize it by date, by folder. Right here is really cool because you can start pinning right? Active files that you're going to be using constantly at your office. Maybe you were reviewing some drawings. So you can see that automatically is going to access them. So you only need to open it once. And something that you can do is simply go ahead and right click, pin that file. And what you're going to notice is as well is going to give me the name of that path. For example, this uh, file right here that I'm showing uh, to you guys is located at my desktop, right? But if I highlight any other tool, it's going to give me the path. So I'm not going to struggle with uh, really long paths and, and trying to find the, uh, the file because uh, right here, I'm going to quickly have access to those files and I, I don't need to get uh, a little bit too worried about those locations. All righty. Something additional as well that you can do is select right here on top of the file access. You also have kind of like an explorer tool. 
So notice right here, it's kind of like giving me um, similar vibes to the Windows Explorer, right? So I'm going to be able to see and follow the paths as well for uh, PDF files, basic documents. So right here, you can even see that I have a couple of Revit files open uh, right there. They, they are not going to open in Bluebeam, but they are giving me the location of those. And as well, I can select all the files and right there you can see uh, kind of like the route that I have uh, for this particular folder. So you can take a look of your desktop, your computer, your documents when it comes to file access. So the Explorer, similar to your Windows Explorer bar, right? Now, something else that I also like to mention when we are setting up the software is going to be kind of like the user preference when it comes to graphics, right? So we can go right there to the top left, select preferences. And right here is one of the most common kind of like questions that uh, we receive and is, okay, can I change the color? Uh, the answer is yes. Since Bluebeam uh, 17, I believe, they have an option to change the theme of uh, your software. So if you prefer kind of like that uh, live vibe uh, of the software, uh, you can definitely go ahead and select that preference. Um, as well, you can reset uh, that definition as well. Go back to the dark mode. You can go ahead and change as well uh, English uh, language to any other language that you may be are using. Um, and right here, um, you kind of have like additional features and options to, okay, um, I would like to define um, basic uh, document uh, information, right? When it comes to the navigation right here, this is related to the way of how you use your mouse to navigate your software, right? We have a feature that is the grid and snap. So this is a really cool feature because I'm going to be able to either show a grid or a snap to a grid on my drawing. So if I apply that definition, let me zoom in so you can see it. So right here, you're going to notice it kind of like fading. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. So right here, you're going to barely notice kind of like some dots visible right there on my screen. So you can as well, give me a second, guys. Sorry about that. Go back to your preferences <coughs> and increase the size of your grids. You can increase the size of the spacing. You can change the units. And you can use those as reference when you're using, for example, um, uh, a PDF drawing that has not been exported using AutoCAD or uh, any DWG type of format, right? Uh, and you can use those to snap, to create your measurements, to create your units. So definitely really great addition and really great tool. Now, give me a second right here, guys. Followed by that, we also have the interface uh, features when it comes to the preferences. Right here, you can modify kind of like the recent history that I was showing you uh, when it comes to file access. We have integration with SharePoint. So this is something really cool and additional. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Excuse me. Then the markup list we are going to see in a minute, and as well to the layers. So, a couple of things that I will recommend if you're setting this up uh, for the first time, or if you're setting this up for your company, is where to go ahead and do a quick navigation on all these features, right? Because we are going to as well be able to find uh, really nice locations for saving our signatures, right? saving uh, our files, defining how uh, you're going to be able to uh, present uh, your drawings. Mm -hmm. And kind of like when it comes to importing and exporting, we also have integration with uh, the Office uh, documents, right? We are not only going to be working with third-party tools such as the Autodesk software, but we can also uh, export this to uh, kind of like our office basic uh, set of tools such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, be able to attach or send uh, images, right? And 
right here, kind of like on the advanced side of things and the admin side of things, you're going to be able kind of like to modify uh, quality of the PDF that you're creating. Now, the structure that you can see right here on my, my screen, once you start getting familiar, is that panels at the left side are going to provide you kind of like organization, right? But as well, they are going to provide you some day-to-day uh, -day use tools, such as the uh, tool chest that we are going to discuss in uh, one of our future um, uh, sessions on this webinars, right? Uh, and the markups are always going to be either located at the right side or at the top. How you can uh, modify this or how you can add. Uh, I always like to mention the tools right here at the top because when you select the tools, something that you're going to be able to do is kind of like notice, uh, barely you're going to see it. Um, my screen, I can barely see it as well. Next to the tool, you can find a small pin option that you can kind of like go ahead and click on it, right? And once I click once again, is going to allow me to bring those tools. Let me repeat that step. So for example, markup right here, I can click on the pin on the right. So for example, typewriter, and I would like to add it, uh, another tool. So for example, uh, alignment. So right here, you can see uh, that I'm start adding those tools. If I want to get rid of those, I can right click, get rid of it. Uh, this one right here, right click, get rid of it. You can also add tools to the right side. In this case, I can also recommend that you can do customize. And right here, you can start cycling through all the categories that you have. So just to give you an example, if your company is heavy on the measurement, so you can select measures and notice kind of like a couple of different tools that we have available. So for example, uh, you always would like to have area. So notice the icon for area. This is something that I ha have, a, have available in mind right here. But let's say that you're also heavy on the uh, diameter. So what you can do is click right here. Then you can add it to the toolbar. So right here, to give you an example, uh, I would like to add it uh, next to the shapes. So diameter shapes and click right here to the right side, you're going to notice that in the order, it will be below count, which is the icon that I have right here. But let's say that I would like to have it above count. So what I can do is move it up, hit OK. And now right here is going to be my diameter tool, where I'm going to be able to start taking my measurements, right? So really, really nice set of tools that we are going to be able to start customizing and adding to our screen and setting up our software. Now, when you first open your software, this is something that I like to bring to your attention, is always is going to give us kind of like a enter screen, kind of like a, an introduction. Uh, and this usually disappears, right, if you close it. so. With that uh, first screen that we receive is that it's going to give us quick access uh, to tutorials and is going to give us quick access to as well the help menu. So that screen is the welcome to review screen. You can access it by going right here to the help menu or you can uh, type F12 on your keyboard. And why do I like to have this uh, screen available? Now, when we are first starting uh, using the project, uh, maybe we are going to skip this screen, but there are really powerful tools right here on this screen. A quick short video that you can go ahead and play, right? But as well, you have a sample file that you're going to be able to start testing out your markups, right? Oh, notice this, this drawing right here, you can see a little bit better the grid lines. But as well, if I load up F12 once again, then I have this feature, really helpful, really useful, launch review tutorials. And what is going to be great about that one is that it's going to give me a dialog box 
where I can go ahead and select uh, get started and it's going to prompt me to the website where I have the Bluebeam University. Now, uh, with your subscription, uh, you're always going to have access to Bluebeam University. Now, uh, the website for Bluebeam University looks like this. So let me bring it up right here. And as well, in some cases, it's going to take you to your Bluebeam Cloud. So really helpful tool. Something that I also like to bring to your attention is with when it comes to these tutorials, you can also have quick access right here in the help menu and Bluebeam University. If you click on it, by default, it's going to take you as well to the site for your Bluebeam University. Right here, always all check your region, sign in with your Bluebeam ID, which is going to be your email, right? And please remember your credentials. I'm that type of user that sometimes forget to add uh, my uh, capital or my symbols, uh, that type of stuff. Uh, you're going to be able to have that. And if you have single sign-on in your uh, company, that is also supported as well uh, by Bluebeam. Now, um, a couple of last things that I want to um, mention uh, when it comes to setting up right here your software for the first time that you're going to use it um, is going to be the navigation of your software. So if you notice right here, I have a couple of right that I'm going to be able to navigate and use. So you can close those as well. And something that I would like to mention is that I can have multiple tabs open and organize my workspace. So you are going to pay attention to right here, the bottom left of the screen, where you can split vertically. So you're going to notice, okay, I'm duplicating kind of like the toilet spec that I have, right? So I can get rid of the one on the left, then the one on the right. And the software has this pretty cool feature that is also kind of like tracking. I love that guy, suddenly, uh, I couldn't even hear the chat or see the chat. So uh, let me repeat kind of like that last couple of things. Uh, and I probably know that you may have a lot of questions. So key aspect right here, a status bar, the one right here at the bottom right, F8 is going to bring it up. The other things that I was mentioning is that you can have two drawings that you can split multiple times. You can synchronize your views. Right? So if I want to work right here on the right side and I would like to navigate, but at the same time have the same location right here at the left, synchronize it with this tool right here. Now, let me take a quick look right here at the chart. Um, all righty. So at the beginning of the splitting screens, all righty, there we go, guys. So, um, this guy uh, right here, bottom left, is playing in the screen. Now, the other thing that I uh, would like to share with you guys is if you have multiple set of drawings, so for example, if you have a, a list of 100 pages, something that you can do as well is selecting these two right here, the one page or the scrolling pages. So with the scrolling pages, you're going to be able to uh navigate between uh all your drawings uh that you have available in your project so let me close right here this one if we select for example right here the thumbnails as well you can navigate to the list of your drawings so let me try to see if i have uh this one for example the join class uh, pdf that i have so notice if i select one page, one full page. I'm going to only see this, this one right here. If I would like to navigate through it, I have the option to use this scrolling bar right here at the right side, or I have my navigation right here at the bottom that I can flip between pages. Or if you decide, you can select scrolling pages. Now this is going to work kind of like a, your typical Word or uh, PowerPoint where you're going to be able to scroll out with your mouse wheel. Alrighty, guys.
yeah and once again apologize on that <laughs> that last minute I, I i couldn't see uh your notifications but yes guys uh let me know do you have any questions okay let me check if we have any questions um the first question i see is um is bluebeam compatible with single sign on uh yes um so um it is available with single sign on they do have uh, an, a specific uh, kind of like definition on how you can set it. So let me go ahead and bring uh, right here, kind of like their uh, a specific uh, site. And I'm going to paste it on the chat. So I hope you, you can see it as well. Maybe Holly as well can, uh, can share it uh, with the attendees. Uh, so single sign-on is going to be uh, available and compatible. Please let me know if you can see my screen or you're only seeing my blue bin. Uh, we're seeing the ORC Labs thing. Okay, you give me a second, so entire screen. There we go. Please let me know if you can see it. Yep. Alrighty, so yes, it's available. Uh, in one of the kind of like uh, definitions that they have is that yes, it's going to be available, but they currently only support configurations for uh, what it used to be Azure Active Directory and OKTAAD. So if uh, you and your company would like to access uh, with your credentials using single sign on, so you can quickly go to Google and uh, right there just type in uh, single sign on Bluebeam and this is going to be the process overview. I see one right here. So Michael asks, inserting toilet specs. So Michael, can you add uh, something to, to that question? What do you mean by inserting them? Kind of like linking them or attaching them to your drawing? Okay, maybe we can read another question while yeah. he, while replies. he replies. Uh -huh. um, the other question I see is, can I change the color of my blue beam? Oh, yeah, let me repeat that one. So uh, right here, top left, review. You're going to go to your preferences. Right here on the general side, you're going to find the team. So team. You're going to hit OK, and it's going to give you kind of like those two options. Oh, so uh, Michael right here says that that was where the screen froze. Oh, thanks, Michael. Oh, and I wanted to add something right there where, where I show the toilet specs. So uh, something that we are going to be able to do right here with our blue bin and we are going to discuss this in, in the following uh, webinars, is that I also have an option to add hyperlinks. So I can create a hyperlink. So let's say that I would like to add the hyperlink right here at this uh, restroom. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Let me repeat it. So hyperlink right here at the restroom. There, could we repeat it? There we go. Let me add it right here, then I can move it. Okay, so something that I'm going to be able to do is select right here, for example, an a snapshot view. I can select rectangle of this area, right? And then I'm going to hyperlink either uh, a URL link, so you can go to a website, or I can as well go ahead and select a location of any file in my computer, right? So I can select the location for that toilet spec, right? Or I can select from one of the active drawings that I have right here. So for example, I can select the toilet spec because I already have it selected. I can hit okay. And notice, if you remember, this is the location for the hyperlink. So something that I can do is 
click right there. So notice how my mouse is going to change. Click on it, and it's going to link. Cool stuff. All righty, cool. Uh, next question. Sorry about that. I, I get excited showing this stuff. <laughs> Okay, the next question is, mm, can I export my setup? Uh, yes, so we just uh, showed you all this setup, right? So you can go right here to review profiles. So let's say that I would like to, yeah, I, I didn't like this one right here, the, uh, the diameter one that I just had. So I can go right here. Let me get rid of it. So I can go to the navigation bar uh, where what it was, uh, the shapes, right? So shapes right here, I don't want the diameter. Uh, I don't like that one. Uh, you can disable that one, hit OK. Now I'm ready to export it. I'm going to go to Review, Profiles. You can save your profile, right? So now it's save it. But you can also do Manage Profiles. And at this point, you can import export so right here the one that we just create uh, and modify is the review one so I can export it I'm going to send it uh, to my desktop mm, there you go the file is going to be review.bpx review is the name of my profile right here you can add your company or your name save it right on this location hit OK then you can share it with your team member. And if you need to load it, you can go once again right here to review, profiles, manage profile. And notice as well, you have the option to add, uh, to create a new profile, or you can select import. And you're going to find that BPX file, right? And just load it. So Michael asks, does the hyperlink file stay with the review file so others can see it after it has been saved? Yes, Michael. And I want to add that it's going to be important that your team members also have access to that route. Because if you link it from your desktop, well, your team members are not going to have access to your desktop. So when they click it, so probably it's going to tell them, hey, uh, I don't have access to see that uh, file, right? So make sure that uh, when you're hyperlinking, you're either using the URL, because everyone is going to have access to uh, the website or looking at it at Google or Edge, right? But if you're using like a, another PDF, um, make sure that your team members have access to that uh, same uh, path. Thanks, Huli. And I think I see another question. Um, can I import my setup from a previous version? Uh, from a previous version? Yes. So right here, uh, same way, uh, you're going to go to your preferences. Uh, I'm sorry, to your um, profiles, right? And when it comes to the managed profiles, once again, you want to make sure uh, that um, has the BPX uh, file extension, right? So you're going to be able to see that it's, it's loading uh, all your tools as you need to. And right here, Michael asks, can the file be embedded instead? Uh, yes, as well, you can do that. So for example, uh, notice my floor plan right here, right? Something that I can do is, let me give you an example, right here on this toilet spec, I can right click on top of the file. Uh, and what I'm going to be able to do uh, by right clicking is find kind of like the, uh, the path of this guy. So let me repeat it right here. So toilet spec, let me see. So right here is the toilet spec. I can right click, open the folder where it's located. And I can do something like this. So right here. I can right click once again, trying to find the, the path for that file. And something that I'm going to be able to do is drag any PDF. So let me give you an example right here. I have another PDF file. So this is the keyboard shortcuts. I'm dragging it from my desktop and I can load it. So right here I have the keyboard shortcuts. So notice right here inside this drawing using the thumbnails, I can, for example, embed this PDF, 
is going to be attached right there below. So maybe you would like to show the drawing and just below that you can show the toilet spec. Let me repeat this by saving this file in my desktop so I have quick access to it. There you go. So now notice what I'm going to do. Bring the toilet spec right here. Now in my drawing, what I'm going to have is, okay, uh, I'm going to follow. And the next thing that I'm going to see is the toilet spec, right? You can also add images. So for example, if you would like to do a screen capture of this guy, something that you can do is control B, copy control B, and maybe add right here the spec. And you can start adding your markups, right? Such as lines and annotations and all that stuff. But I think we are going to cover a little bit more on tools uh, on the next webinars, guys. So pay attention to those ones. Thank you, Lee. And I don't see if you see more questions, but I don't see any more. Um, so while we wait, if there are more questions, I just want to remind you all that if you want to learn um, any of these topics in detail, you can take a custom training with Julian or someone else on our team. And we also offer group classes online. Um, so I wanted to also remind you that we will have in another webinar soon on April 10, which is, I believe it's next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And this one will be about fusion with extensions, um, a highly requested one. And then we will have another Bluebeam webinar on April 11. So next Thursday, uh, it's called the Design Trinity, Revit, Bluebeam, and Markup Synergy. So that one will be very interesting. If you want to check them out, you have the link to our registration page, and you can go and register. And again, if you cannot make it, you will get the recording. And talking about recordings, we will be editing this this recording obviously so you guys don't have to um, repeat um, all of that and the ones who didn't attend don't know <laughs> that we had that so yeah if there are no more questions um, I like to I like to thank Julian for this wonderful presentation and thank you all for for attending and yes we will include the parts that were missed don't worry about that. Thanks, everyone. I will everyone. be editing, and, and you will be good. I promise. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.